Thank you for joining us on this episode. Today on the Myopia Podcast, we're joined by Matt Ording. He's going to be speaking with us about three principles to grow your myopia management practice, GMAC, and the Treehouse Eyes. Matt is the co-founder and CEO of Treehouse Eyes. He's an executive with 25 years of experience with Novartis, General Mills, General Electric. Matt has held leadership roles in marketing, strategy, and general management in the United States, Europe, and in Asia. Matt's passionate about making a difference in people's lives. He's focused on the eye care sector since 2001. He's the past board chair for the Global Myopia Awareness Coalition, uh, made up of 15 companies that is associated and focusing on driving awareness for childhood myopia. Matt lives in Boulder, Colorado with his wife and two daughters. Optometric Insights Media proudly presents the Myopia Podcast where we give you the latest myopia research, clinical topics, and industry insights. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome myopia content. And now to our host, a massive myopia manager himself, Dr. David Kading. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Myopia Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe. We're joined today with uh, Matt Erding. Uh, Matt has uh, had an incredible place in the myopia world and uh, has uh, recently been uh, very impactful with several initiatives of which we'll talk about today. So thank you for joining us, Matt. We're so glad to have you on the podcast. Thanks so much, Dave. Uh, really honored to be uh, part of the guests uh, with your podcast and love that you are doing this and helping spread the word about myopia and myopia management. Thank you. We, uh, you know, we've um, had uh, a, a lot happening in the world of myopia, if you haven't heard. Uh, you've uh, helped kickstart this and light some fires under this as well. Um, I think as far as I recall, uh, one of your big first initiatives into the world of myopia management is with a, uh, a little program called T Treehouse Eyes. Is that correct? Or did your myopia past uh, really start somewhere else? Yeah, it's interesting. So Treehouse Eyes was certainly the genesis uh, five and a half years ago for yeah. the current myopia thrust I've been involved with. But believe it or not, uh, my myopia started back in 2006. Uh, really? I was at SEBA Vision and we had a project with Brian Holden uh, where we were looking at lens designs for slowing the progression of myopia in kids and actually running clinical trials in Asia. So I got to know Brian way back then and got to know, um, you know, 15 years ago about myopia management, at least in theory, and actually did focus groups with parents in Hong Kong and Singapore talking about what it would mean for them if we could slow the progression of myopia in their ch children. So yeah. uh, I, I had the seed planted a long time ago, but but really it was uh, 2015 with Dr. Gary Gerber that, uh, you know, really kicked off what's now Treehouse Eyes. Yeah. So uh, interesting. I, I do recall back in the uh, early 2000s, I was doing my residency in 2004, 2005, and I know that there was some kind of some talk with SEBA uh, Vision and uh, and with Brian Holden. And uh, wow, it's kind of interesting to make that connection. So Treehouse Eyes, you and Gary Gerber really uh, got this project going. Tell us a little bit about the genesis and how uh, Treehouse Eye uh, got started uh, initially and um, you know where you are today. I know that it's grown a, a huge amount in the last 12 months. Yeah, it has. So I'll tell you, I've known Gary for 20 years. Uh, we met when I first started it in the industry back in the early 2000s. And he called me up in 2015 and said, you know, Matt, what do you know about myopia? And uh, knowing Gary as I do, I said, well, what do you know about myopia? Um, <laughs> you know, I know you're an OD, but you focus more on the practice management side of things. And we got to talking and, and he just was intrigued that more ODs weren't doing myopia management back in 2015 and uh, he had his power practice consulting business and he was trying to work with a lot of his clients to get them to do more myopia management because you know, there's a huge need for it and it can be it can be very profitable for their practice and he said Matt I'm frustrated I've only got a handful of docs that actually have embraced this and we started talking about why uh, well it's hard right if you want to do it properly no parents knew anything about myopia management. So mm -hmm. presenting it was, was difficult because you've got to convince a parent 
that there's a need for this for their child. They haven't heard about it. Uh, so there's a credibility issue potentially. And then there's the disruption it can have on a primary care practice in terms of chair time, right? And how do I charge for it appropriately? And so six years ago, also the, the amount of products, nothing was FDA approved for myopia management. So everything was off label. And there wasn't a ton of science yet on why these products worked. Um, but Gary's idea, which I, I credit him, he's a visionary, was, you know, I, I think there's a need for a company not focused on the product side of things. We'll leave that up to industry. They're developing products, uh, contact lenses, glasses, atropine. Mm -hmm. There's a need to really have a retail brand, a service brand, that really focuses on this and has a dedicated focus. So that was really the genesis. Um, that was in April of 2015. We spent about six months doing research with parents primarily and doing some industry research as well about what a business model would look like where we partner with doctors and help them implement myopia management in practice. Yeah. Uh, and we launched the company in, at the end of 2015 and our belief then and, and still is now, this is a massive need and we, we can't wait 20 years for industry to adopt this. Mm -hmm. We need to help these kids now. Um, we're both fathers. Uh, we both have kids. You know, my wife is a high myope. My 11 year old's been on myopia treatment for almost two years now. So it's, it's very personal for us as well. And, uh, I, I could talk a little bit more about our growth, but that's kind of the genesis of, of how we got started. Yeah. Well, I think one of the things that it has done and how it's impacted the industry, obviously it's a business and you guys have interest in growing the business, but uh, forever, you know, Gary has given away his perspectives on things outside of just his power practice. And that's what you guys have really done with uh, Treehouse Eyes as well is <clears throat> you've, you've helped bring the industry around and start focusing on it. Myopia meetings and lecturing and Treehouse Eyes doctors have you're helping grow that industry. So that's been a really pa powerful part of this as well for those who not aren't even Treehouse Eyes as well. Was that something that you guys always established to do or is that was just your DNA as it is? Yeah, I think it, we always knew somebody needed to lead um, on the service side. You know, who's going to actually do this? And we, Gary always says, and I agree with him, um, there's enough kids out there for everyone that we need to help, right, Dave? Uh, I did an analysis for OIS myopia back in April that the total addressable market for myopia treatment right now is $55 billion annually. Mm -hmm. That's a billion with a B. Yeah. That's the addressable market. Now, the real market right now is probably only 10 or 20 million, right? right. Um, so there's enough out there for everyone, but we knew someone needed to lead and somebody that was passionate about myopia, passionate about, giving each kid the right clinical treatment for them. So not being a, a focused just on ortho K or just on soft contact lenses or just atropine, somebody that was always going to focus on what's right for each child. And it's been really pleasing. I'll tell you, it was pretty lonely five years ago to, to start. And we started with two flagship centers in the DC area, which we still have today where we've got about 850 kids in treatment. Uh, those are dedicated center models. That That's all we do every day. Um, but we've since grown with a licensing model where we partner with full scope eye care practice owners and we help them to bring this into their practice uh, in the right way. Clinically, from a practice management perspective, from a staff training perspective, marketing, how do you, how do you really implement this in, in the right way in your area and really become the expert in your market? So that's who we partner with as we've expanded. You know, we've now got 47 locations in 22 states um, with over half of that in the last 12 months alone. So wow. it's been yeah. really gratifying, not just personally to grow the business, because yes, it is a business, but to see our partner doctors growing their practice and having their staff really support this. And then to your point, we, we do continuing education for other doctors that aren't even part of Treehouse Size. Mm -hmm. You know, we want everybody to be part of this because, you know, there's 15 to 20 million kids today in the U.S. that need our help. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we're not even close to that. No, uh, we, we are not. And even if uh, we had 500 Treehouse Size centers today, we still couldn't serve a fraction of those kids in need. So it's going to take the whole industry <laughs> To, to make this happen. And there's going to be doctors that say, look, I don't want this to be a big part of my practice. Great. Refer to someone who is going to be doing it. 
Yeah. Um, and there's going to be those that say, I just want to do a little bit. And then there's going to be those who say, look, I want this to be a big part of my practice. And, you know, those are the types of doctors we love partnering with. Yeah, absolutely. So talking about, you know, awareness and bringing, uh, bringing insights to people, there is this organization called the Global Myopia Awareness Coalition. Um, you know, I think over the last maybe two years, uh, practitioners have started to hear about this. And some people, some people know all about what GMAC is, but can you kind of share what GMAC is and how it kind of came about being? You've been really instrumental in helping this organization as well. Yeah, thanks for asking about it because I'm passionate about GMAC's work and, and love spreading the word. So I'll tell you, GMAC came from a, a very simple comment that we were getting every day in our Treehouse Eye Center. Every day, some parent would say, why haven't I heard about this before? Mm -hmm. Why haven't I heard about this before? And our frustration was nobody was out there in a big way talking to the public about myopia and myopia management. So we actually organized a meeting three years ago uh, in Denver at associated with the uh, a AOA meeting. And we brought together about 40 leaders from industry, practitioners, people from manufacturers, insurers, and we just had a brainstorming session for half a day, facilitated by a friend of mine, Bart Foster, um, and it, who's a great resource in this industry to people. And we came up with some ideas, and the core of the idea was, why don't we get companies to work together to promote this message to the public? And get, getting companies in this industry, uh, Dave to work together, can be challenging at times, right? They're, they're, these are commercial organizations that compete with each other, but what they all had in common was they understood that it's going to be hard to make myopia management big if the public doesn't know anything about it. We can't put all the onus on the doctor to do the education, right? We have to educate parents in particular and allied healthcare professions. So out of that, fast yeah. forward, you know, we created GMAC. Um, and a lot of credit to the founding companies, uh, Coopervision, Essilor, VTI, Euclid and a number of others that, you know, the first eight companies that uh, two years ago formed GMAC, putting yep. financial contributions in. Um, and we've expanded since then. So we've now got 15 companies yep. and organizations that are part of GMAC. Um, we still run really lean. It's an all volunteer organization. Um, I was honored to chair it for the first two years. Yep. Uh, JC Aragon from Cooper Vision is the current board chair. Mm -hmm. um, but our mission is to promote awareness of myopia and my myopia management to the public. So we don't take sides on should I use atropine or should I use glasses? Uh, we don't take sides on should I see an optometrist or an ophthalmologist? Our, our goal is educate you and get you to start asking your eye doctor about myopia and myopia treatment options. Um, How are you doing that? Yeah, so we launched our first public facing campaign here in the US uh, two years ago, this month. Um, so we've now had four campaigns. Uh, and what we do is we partner with primarily social influencers who have big following on social media. And because GMAC doesn't need to be known, um, we need people who are known and are trusted. And so we've partnered with parent influencers who have anywhere from you know, 200,000 followers to several million um, to deliver our message to the public. Uh, last year, we had a Game Over Myopia campaign that we ran two different iterations where we really focused because of the pandemic on getting your kids to get off screens. Um, and you know, get away from the games, get outside, uh, which we know outdoor time can have a preventative Im impact on developing myopia. Um, and we actually partnered with gamers. So uh, we, we had some really fun with it and, and they were educating you know, gaming parents and gaming kids about myopia. So uh, we've had a lot of success in terms of engagement so far. Our budget's limited. You know, sure. this is something that's gonna build over several years. Yeah. But I'm really pleased so far with, you know, one, just industry support has been fantastic. And, yeah. you know, we're still talking to companies that aren't involved. You know who you are and we want you to get in. Um, <laughs> and then how do we get eye doctors to partner more and, and you know, help them um, share out some of this information that as we launch these campaigns. So 
Uh, we actually just did a shoot two days ago for our next campaign. Um, yeah. And we'll be launching that in about three weeks. So yeah. uh, look for look for that shortly. But that's really been what the main thrust has been to date is these advertising campaigns and satellite media tours. You know, we've had coverage in the New York Times. Um, and we are starting to talk to other organizations, so the AOA, AAO, ophthalmology, pediatricians. So we're actually starting to talk to some of these other organizations that are that are finally interested in myopia and how do we work together to to just accelerate this message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I, I think that that as we become more uh, aware of myopia, we're going to see more practitioners, you know, delving into myopia management. Many of uh, the people that are listening right now are, are already interested or are already doing it. So I, I want to jump into your uh, incredible business sense and see if you can give us some insights. Uh, I have a practice. I have, you know, let's say 25 patients doing myopia management. And I want to double it next year or triple it next year. Other than word of mouth, which is highly underutilized, asking for referrals, what are some suggestions you might give to practitioners to double our myopia management or triple myopia management in the coming year? Uh, I, I ask this because that was, in fact, one of the goals that I had many years ago where I was at 50 and, uh, you know, we doubled the next year and we were at a hundred. The beauty about myopia management is, uh, every one that you add new patients, you know, you're adding on to what you did the year before. So how do we go from 50 to a hundred or a hundred to 200? What are some strategies you might recommend, uh, with all of your vast marketing and wisdom and business sense? Yeah, it's a great question and, and one that we are passionate about when we work with partners as well, because we work with some partners that barely have done myopia management and, and they want to get started and accelerate it. And, we, you know, we've had folks that do 60 or 70 a year already, but how do I get to 200 a year? Yeah. Um, so I give you three principles sure. that maybe can help uh, your audience. So the first is be committed to it. I would say we've talked to doctors who they, they put myopia management as a service on their website. They'll have an occasional social post about it, but the staff doesn't know much about it. And I would say even the doctor, him or herself, doesn't really believe in it. So first is you and the practice have to believe that you're doing the right thing by offering myopia management. Mm -hmm. uh, and that can be, it sounds obvious to you and I, but I'll tell you to a lot of optometrists, you know, you're, you're trained to fix these vision issues or eye health issues. Glasses work great. And suddenly, wow, do I really need to do this? Yeah, I could see that it, it can be helpful, but then what do I charge for it? And is it really worth it? And what's the real value? You know, Matt, so, I, think the, I think there may be a reason why that is. And, you know, you, we look at it as, as to why have things like uh, you know, dry eye treatments that we bring into our office not caught on, or why do we? And I think it's because we oftentimes get caught up in the solution rather than the problem. And so we heard this new contact lens got approved by FD the FDA, and our rep came in and said, hey, you should start fitting this. And we're like, okay, well, I'll give it a try, right? No, you have to be sold that myopia is a disease that is affecting millions of children and is affecting the kids in your office and in your community, and you have to fix it, right? What are the yes. solutions that do it? Bring those in, but you have to be driven to know that you're changing the future for children by slowing down myopia. I think we get caught up as a profession on the solution and we don't focus on the problem. I agree 100% with you. And we talk to our doctors about, don't even think about if it's atropine or my site or whatever else. You're, you're coming up with a solution to a problem. Mm -hmm. What product do you use? While well, the manufacturers want it to be theirs and they want that to be the, the hero, that's not, right? What has to be the hero is you in the practice solving this problem. So that's what I mean when I say that first principle is you just gotta be committed. That to your point, my, we actually talk about this. Myopia is a disease. It's a progressive disease in children. 
And what other disease do we just let kids get worse every year and not do anything about it? I can't name one, right? Yeah. So, so that's the first is it's attitude. Yeah. And it's not just the doctor, it's, it's the entire staff being committed to it. Um, the second one I would say is have the conversation with every parent, every parent, even if they don't bring their kid in. And what do I mean by that? I, I like to use this analogy. So my kids are 11 and 13 now. When they were about eight years old, every time I took them to the dentist, our dentist started talking about braces. Even though they weren't ready, and it was probably three years away, started talking about they're probably going to need braces, and here's why. So by the time they were 10, 11, I was sensitized when I went to the orthodontist, and he told me for the, for the privilege of 18 to 24 months of braces, I got to give him $5,500. It wasn't a sale at that point. I was already committed mentally. So we need to think the same way. Every primary care eye exam, whether a kid's there or a parent's there, talk about myopia, even if it's for a minute. Talk about it as a disease. Talk about it as progressive. Even to that parent who's bringing in that five-year-old for their first eye exam. Mm -hmm. um, because, and especially if they've got risk factors, like one or more parents are myopic, you know, um, but I, I would say don't even stop there. Do it to every parent. And, and there's no reason not to other than maybe we don't believe in it and we think it takes too much chair time. But it, and you know this from practicing. You, you can have that conversation in less than a minute. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. Right. But what you were doing is you're setting yourself up for the future. That next eye exam when they come in or that first time that the kid's prescription changes and you got to get them new, new lenses. Now they're ready. Um, yeah. So just just have the conversation with every parent, right? So and that's, that's, uh, you know that goes to the uh, the old saying that the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is today, right? So we should have had those conversations five, 10 years ago. Look at where my opium management practice would be. But having those conversations today will be something we'll be grateful that we did two, three, five, 10 years ago, and let alone this year for those people who get talking about it, right? Very Absolutely. Cool. No, you're right. Because what's really interesting, we learned at Treehouse Eyes, you know, we've had patients in treatment almost five years now in our dedicated centers. And there were a lot of patients who needed myopia treatment four or five years ago. Parent wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. And we follow up every six months. Uh, and suddenly a year later, two years later, even, yeah, I'm ready. Now, unfortunately, that child's already a minus five, right? We could have helped him even more if we'd started when they were minus one, but right. that's that education process, right? Yeah. So I, I yeah. think that's just, it's something every practice can do now, um, yeah. whether they're doing myopia management in a big way or not. Um, cool. And then third principle, the, yeah. Yeah, the third principle is work with, work with someone who understands marketing to get new patients in. So. What do I mean by that? Um, this is not an easy one for marketing. And I, the message is a little bit complex. Parents haven't heard about it. Although through our work at GMAC and others, I think they're slowly building this level of awareness. Uh, but I see too many practices not have a sound marketing strategy on how they want to communicate about myopia management, whether that be on their website, brochures, case presentation that they're saying, um, what their media strategy might be. Are they doing PPC and Google ads? Uh, you know, are they doing local uh, market outreach? And I think there's, there's great assets that you can get from Cooper Vision or other manufacturers to help you with that. There's a lot more available now from others that you can lean into. Um, and if you work with an iCare Pro or an agency like that who helps you with your website marketing, talk to them about a marketing strategy for myopia management. Mm -hmm. um, and I just see too many inconsistent messages out there. Uh, people, if I go to a website today, to, to your point, Dave, it's going to talk about atropine or soft lenses. That's not what's going to make a parent say yes, right? Let's talk right. about the benefits of treatment now and for this child's entire life. Um, and then when you get them in the chair, you figure out what product makes the yeah. most sense to use. Um, so I think just having a really smart and coherent marketing strategy um, and obviously with Treehouse Eyes, we, we work extensively with our partners to do that. But even those that don't work with Treehouse Eyes, there's, there's ways to, to get there. 
yeah. uh, and be a lot smarter about it. But I just see a lot of poor marketing um, yeah. from practices and they wonder why, you know, why is nobody saying yes or why am I not attracting new patients? Yeah. My, uh, my dad told me when I started my business that your accountant needs to send his kid to college too. Uh, so you probably aren't the best bookkeeper for your business. So use somebody who knows what they're doing and, you know, uh, somebody who helps in the marketing world, that's what they do. And so certainly, uh, w- uh, you know, we need to be considered, uh, to, to reach out and have somebody help us. I think the reason why it looks chunky is because we're doing it right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. I tell, I tell, um, our doctor partners all the time, I'm not an optometrist. I'm not going to tell you what to do clinically. Right. Um, so maybe trust me when I tell you what needs to be on your website um, yeah. or how to spend your media dollars. Yeah. Cool. Well, Matt, it was a pleasure to get to talk with you. Uh, I sure appreciate you joining us. These were incredible messages, three principles to help us to grow our myopia practices. Uh, you told us a little bit about Treehouse Eyes and um, some incredible information. And then also GMAC. If people want to learn more about these things that you talked about, is there some resources or some direction you want us to point them to? Yeah, thanks. So for GMAC, uh, you can go to allaboutvision.com mm-hmm. slash GMAC. And we've got a parent-facing resource out there um, that parents can learn more about myopia and myopia treatment. And then for Treehouse Eyes, just go to treehouseeyes.com. Uh, that's a consumer-facing uh, website or growmymyopiapractice.com, which is more for practitioners who want to learn more about partnering with us. Very cool. Well, thanks, Matt. It is a pleasure to chat with you. We sure appreciate you joining us. Thanks for what you're doing in the myopia world to advance our profession. No, thanks, Dave. I appreciate you starting this and having me on. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for listening to this episode of the Myopia Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, We would be honored if you'd leave us a five-star review, help us to know what more you want to know about myopia. And thank you for joining us again for this episode of the Myopia Podcast. This podcast was brought to you by Optometric Insights Media. If you enjoy our content, please leave a five-star review. And don't forget to subscribe for more great episodes.